Hey everybody, Shoebox Legends here. Thanks for joining me for a video today where we're going to look at some hockey cards that are a little bit rare or something different that you don't see every day. So I've talked a couple times in the history of the channel about my love of the top buybacks in the baseball realm. Just a huge uh, sucker for buyback cards. I know a few of you are as well. And I uh, did want to do an episode here where I talk about some hockey buybacks because those are a thing uh, or at least have been on a couple of occasions. Um, I don't think there's as many hockey buybacks floating around out there as there are baseball. Um, this has only been done a couple times, but uh, I'm of course into them as a hockey card collector and buyback fan, and so I have some to uh, show today. And these are basically from the very first upper deck set. So this Marc Messier card that you see in front of you here, if you're not a hockey card collector or you're not familiar with the story, in the same way that upper deck came and revolutionized the baseball landscape, uh, for better or worse, in 1989. The following year, uh, they did the same in the world of hockey. So in the 1990-91 season, the hockey card market exploded. Uh, prior to that, it was Tops and Opeachy every year. That was it. If you lived in the U.S., you bought Tops. If you lived in, in uh, Canada, you bought Opeachy, and that was the one set, and that was the deal. Uh, but starting in 1990, a lot of other companies burst onto the scene and this very first Upper Deck set from 1990 that you see here is sort of iconic in the history of hockey cards. They've, of course, gone on to maintain their NHL license uh, consecutively all the way through and have produced a flagship uh, Upper Deck hockey set all the way up to and including the present season. And they are, at least now, the exclusively uh, licensed producer of NHL trading cards and sort of the gold standard for base hockey cards in the same way that Topps flagship is in the world of baseball. So this is the set that started it all, the 1990-91 release. And 20 years later, in their 2010-2011 release, they decided to reissue some of those 1990 cards as stamped buybacks, exactly in the same way that Topps has done it uh, in the videos that I've talked about this previously. So they would just go out into the marketplace, acquire some 1990 Upper Deck hockey cards, stamp them, and then reissue them in the 2010 product. And this is what a reissued card would look like. So this is Doug Smale of the Winnipeg Jets. And basically, as you can see, it's the exact same uh, first upper deck card of Smale, just like the Messier that we saw in the background, except that it's emblazoned with this large uh, upper deck 20th anniversary 1990 through 2010 Silver stamp. Kind of hard to miss that. These are these are very easy to spot in the realm of buybacks. And these were relatively hard to come across. So the deal with these, they were only included in the Upper Deck French release in uh, 2010. You can see here with the position in the upper right, this is the French version of this card. So uh, each year, or at least at this time, I don't know if they still do, uh, Upper Deck would produce a more limited version of their flagship hockey set with the language entirely done in French, for, obviously for French Canadian collectors. And so in 2010, you could only pull these buybacks from the 2010-11 French hobby boxes. And they were relatively rare. I think you got one, maybe two per hobby box. And the deal with the French hobby boxes that year, Upper Deck created only 499 cases individual serial numbered cases of 12 boxes per case. So that means less than 6,000 total boxes of uh, French 2010 Upper Deck Hockey were produced. You know, so at one to two uh, of these parallels per box, there are somewhere between, you know, six and 12,000 of these buybacks that exist in total. Uh, however, there were 400 cards in the in the original series one set that they did these buybacks of. So that means, you know, depending on the breakdown and how evenly the, the distribution was between cards, uh, it's generally believed that there are only somewhere between 15 and 30 copies of each one of these buyback cards in existence. Um, so you would pull these from your Upper Deck French packs in, in 2010, and each one would come with one of these certificate of uh, authenticity cards along with it. Um, just letting you know in French that you were lucky enough to pull this card and giving it, I guess, a little bit more validity. Uh, I store my 
um, certification cards right in the penny sleeve with the buybacks just to keep them organized. So yeah, that is the story of these 2010s. So pretty darn difficult to come by. You just don't see them that often. Uh, even total commons nowadays, uh, especially 10 years later, you're lucky if you can find one for more than two or three bucks. But I've got a nice little stack of them here that I've accumulated over the years. <laughs> they even did the checklist. I mean, it's part of the set, so it got stamped you know, just like any other card would as a, as a buyback. Steve Weeks with the nice brown pads there. You got one of the Hatcher brothers, Kevin. I think I have the Darian Hatcher as well, which is his rookie. Uh, maybe coming up further on in the stack, Troy Murray, Shell Samuelson. So yeah, no, uh, I don't have any big gun stars, I don't think, in this stack that I pulled here. But, you know, when you consider how relatively rare these are, uh, here's Sergei Makarov, who, of course, controversially won the Rookie of the Year at, like, age 27 after migrating over from Russia and was uh, responsible for them changing the rules so that uh, there were some age restrictions on the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year. It's one of the Sutter brothers there, Ron. Ulf Dahlen with the awesome uh, Minnesota North Stars gear. Always loved the Stars patches emblazoned on the hockey pants. The North Stars had some of the greatest uh, uniforms back in the day. Missed that franchise, same as the uh, Nordiques and my beloved Whalers. Uh, here's Jeff Smith's super uh, rookie team, or all rookie team. Um, so yeah, all all 400 cards from the original 1990 Series 1 Upper Deck set allegedly exist um, in buyback format. I suspect that these weren't produced in even numbers, meaning... Uh, there aren't necessarily 20 Wayne Gretzky's and 20 Gord Deneen's and 20 Yarmir Yager rookies. Uh, I have a feeling that some of the commons are more popular and some of the superstar players have even fewer buybacks in circulation. For example, I've, I have never seen a Yarmir Yager rookie buyback. I, I'm sure I would be priced out of it almost instantly if I did, but um, there are certain cards that I've just never seen in buyback format. Um, so in theory, they exist out there, but who knows in actuality. So I don't drive myself crazy uh, trying to like complete a set of these or anything. It may not even be a possible task. I just accumulate them anytime I run across them and just appreciate any of them that I'm fortunate enough to grab. Love this Daniel Berthume because the mask here you can see on top is great. So he painted one of those old school goalie masks on the top of his so that when he was looking down as he is in this photo it would almost look like uh, someone in one of those Jason masks is staring out at you. So kind of a cool uh, paint job there. Uh, Mike McPhee, Canadians, Gerald Diddick. So yeah, this is just uh, for the same reason that I love the baseball buybacks. This is just a fun way to kind of recollect a set of my youth. Uh, I, I, I was just getting into hockey card collecting with my dad and Two younger brothers when this upper deck set you know hit the landscape and this was such a huge deal we opened so much of this product and so many of the cards on the checklist are sentimental or hold memories to me for that reason and so i like kind of recollecting it again all these years later with a uh, sort of a scarcity element introduced like this uh, here's the other hatcher brother that i referenced darian in his uh draft first round draft pick rookie card pretty awesome uh, north stars buyback there Hall of Famer uh, Denny Savard here, famous for the Spinorama and one of the uh, more underrated scorers of the 80s. Here's one of those cool uh, team checklist cards. So again, you know, they did every card on the on the set in buyback format, including these illustrated team checklists that Upper Deck was known for uh, for many, many years. So this one is Al McGinnis, Hall of Famer, one of the most uh, feared slap shots in history with the Calgary Flames. And then uh, the last card that I have here for today is Larry Murphy, uh, another Hall of Famer defenseman for the North Stars. And we get one more look at those uh, fantastic sweaters and uh, three looks at the North Stars logo on the card here between the two guys in the photo and the team logo in the lower right. Uh, this is an awesome card. So, um, yeah, that's really it. You know, this is a, a nice batch of these. I didn't count these as we flipped through them, but I think we probably looked at, you know, 20 or 30 of these anyway. Um, I have others in my collection that I'll probably show at some point in the future, but just uh, ran across this stack and while I was organizing and sorting and thought this might make a cool video and maybe something that some of you that are hockey card collectors maybe weren't collecting all the way back in uh, 2010 and just haven't seen these due to their uh, 
scarcity. So I wanted to share that with everybody. And uh, if you made it to the end and stuck with me for 10 minutes, it's greatly appreciated. I uh, would love to hear any comments or thoughts on these buybacks or buybacks in general in the comments below. And uh, in the meantime, I hope everybody is enjoying collecting and I'll be back soon with some more sports card content. Take care.